so this is going to be a video that's all about um, some of Smart Notebook's new features and this one is going to focus on the Activity Builder. So I'm really excited about the new Activity Builder. It gives us an opportunity to build and create interactive self-correcting activities for the students that we have created and decided where things are going to go and how they're going to look. It's a little bit different from the Lesson Activity Toolkit in that respect. And this one's not flash-based like the Lesson Activity Toolkit is. So I'm going to start with an example of what the Activity Builder looks like. And this is uh, an example from SMART. And I have three what are called activity objects here. The recycle bin, the compost bin, and the garbage can. And basically what I've done is I've told the activity builder which answers are going to be correct out of all the items down at the bottom here. Uh, and so students can come up and put the right items in the right bins. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to grab a water bottle, which is recyclable, and it disappears because it's correct. You put the sunglasses in, it pops out because it's incorrect. Some people have told me that one can recycle sunglasses, but I had it set up for the garbage. I'm going to put this can in the recycling bin. I'm going to compost an apple. Say if I tried to compost newspaper, oh, it popped back out. Again, some people tell me newspapers can be composted. Okay, I'm going to recycle that, and I'm going to recycle the tin can and I'm going to compost the last two items. And now I've done a great activity for my kids, interactive, that can be up at the board, but it can be self-correcting so you as the teacher can free yourself up to do other things. So now we're going to take a look at how to build something like this from scratch and it's really easy. So what I've done here is I have brought in a box and written the word vowels on top and another box that's a bit larger and written the word consonants on top. So previously we would have the ability to sort these, but the students might not know when they've had a problem. So now with the Activity Builder we can set it up so that the students get instant feedback. I'm actually going to use another Notebook 11 feature that's new and I'm going to reset this page so all my letters go back to where I want them to. So I'm going to use the drop down menu in my Page Sorter tab and I'm going to go to Reset Page. It'll ask me if I want to put it back to my last save state, and I'm going to say yes, reset the page, and now everybody goes back to where they need to go. So now I'm going to come to my fifth tab down. It looks like a blue puzzle piece, and that is the Activity Builder tab. Actually, what this one is is really called the Add-ons tab, and it looks like that. So I'm hoping more things will go in this little Add-ons tab as we move forward. But we're going to focus on the new one, the Activity Builder, today, and click there. Right now I have zero objects on this page because I haven't designed and built this page yet. I also have a little uh, note down here that gives me written instructions of how to build an activity, which is great, but also that's why we got this video too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the vowels box here, and I want to be able to tell uh, the software that this is going to be where I want all the vowels to end up. So now I'm going to click the edit button. Now you can see at the top it says I'm in currently in Activity Builder Edit Mode, which is what I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the objects from here, and I'm going to drag and drop them. I'm going to put the correct answers here. So here it says accept these objects, and I'm going to accept the letter A as a vowel. Here you can see my letter A is still on my active page, but now it's got a green check mark next to it, which means yes, that's being accepted into the vowels box. I'm going to sort A, E, I, O and U. It doesn't look like my O made it in. That was my fault. I'll just drag and drop that again. There we go. What I love about this part here is for reject these objects, I can just click add all remaining and everything else on the page will just get bumped in to the incorrect box essentially. This is obviously a very primary example, kind of pre-K, K, grade one perhaps, but it's about learning the method in which we build activities. The content gets to come from your creativity. So this is where our objects are going to be sorted. Now I'm going to click on the settings button over to the right. This is where I can tell the software what I'd like it to do. So in the previous example you saw that the objects faded out as the answers were correct. Sometimes you want the students to be able to see the 
items they've already put into a, a activity uh, item. So what I'm going to do is you can click none and those will just stick wherever the student lands it. So if it's correct it'll just stick and if it's incorrect this is where we have this option to bounce back if the objects are incorrect. So when they're rejected they'll bounce back. So I'm actually going to set this one. You can have a fade out as we saw, a fly out, a snap to center where they're all pile up on top of each other, or a spin. So I'm going to do a fly out just for fun. If I was doing this with students of this age, I'd probably leave the letters where they were so the students could see that. You also have the option to play the object sound. Um, so if there was a sound file attached giving the children the letter of the name or the sound that it makes, you could attach a sound file to it and you would be able to hear the object sound. So now I'm going to click done because I'm done editing the vowels box. Now I have one activity object on the page. Now I'm going to come over to the consonants and I'm going to click on that guy and I'm going to make him an activity object so I'm going to click edit. So now I'm going to do the opposite way. I'm actually going to reject the vowels down here just because it's going to be faster. So I'm going to take the A, the E, the I, oh, and these haven't made it in yet, E and I, and now you can see these guys are getting a red cross, an O, come on Mr. O, over he goes, and U, and I'm going to reject this big vowels box as well in case there's a big mix up. And up at the top, I'm going to accept all remaining and add all remaining, which are all of your, um, pardon me, all of your consonants, which is great. I'm going to click on the settings button again. And the original one, we had decided to let them fly out. So I'm going to do that again. And now I'm going to click done. Now that I'm done editing, I can get rid of my Activities Builder tab if I want to, or my Add-ons tab, and I can come into full screen if I'd like, so this is how my students would see it. And in Notebook 11, sometimes they can't see your full page, so what you need to do is you need to grab from the Draw menu, and on a Windows machine that looks like three dots, and I'm just going to click Entire Page, and that's allowing me to see everything on my page here in full screen. So now this is what my students would come and do. So A was correct, it flew out, B was incorrect, and it went back to place. E is correct, so it's going to fly out. B is correct, so it flies out, and so on. Oh, D is correct, you should fly for me, Mr. D. And reject, and so on. So that's how easy it can be to build your first activity, really straightforward. Not sure what happened with that D, but I go back and fix it if I was to bring this into the classroom. The next thing I'm going to show you is some templates that are available to you when you download and install Notebook 11. So I'm now going to come to my Galleries tab. And in my Galleries tab, underneath Lesson Activity Toolkit 2.0 now says Lesson Activity Examples. So your first tab or your first folder underneath Lesson Activity Examples now is Activity Builder. So what I love about this is that there's some pictures in here that can be object boxes or a hat if you choose, which is very useful. Or notebook files and pages like this one over here that are templates that you can then edit. Obviously this is a very specific example here, but you can take their idea and begin to edit it as you need. So there's some labeling, some matching, uh, answer checks, etc. So these are very worthwhile to check out what these examples are so you can get some ideas going about what types of interactivities you could build. There's also another tab here about interactive techniques with 10 pages that are really useful for some additional um, interactive activity ideas. So I'm going to use this template and I got that one wrong, but I got that one right. I got that one right. So these are, oh, and that one's wrong, so it's spinning. So these are some really good examples of ones that you can use quick and easily in the classroom. So last step, I'm going to show you how you can start from a total blank page. And again, I might use the lesson activity examples in my gallery. So I'm going to come to Activity Builder. 
And I'm not going to use a pre-created file and page. I'm just going to use a picture. And I'm going to use a blue activity box here. And I can use a white activity box there if I want to. And then you could just go odd. Just type in your type text. Even. And then in your gallery, you could search number. I'm going to go to related folders and go into counting. Bring in some pictures. And you can start so easy right away with this type of content. So you can start from a very blank page and have an interactive activity. Last piece that I really appreciate about this, and I'm going to come back to my original one that I created, is that from the Activity Builder tab, I can hit a little button that says Reset All. And everybody will come back to their place and be ready for another student to complete the activity. So this could become you know, a multi-center activity where you have one group doing the activity and then you can rotate and have another. So that's an example of how you can use the Activity Builder from scratch and grab some pre-created interactive content in Notebook 11.